Thank you. Um, you indicated that this uh, blogger approached you. Yes. And do you know how he found out about uh, your feelings? He, yeah, he. I don't think I'm sorry. Uh, can you repeat the question? Do you know how he found out that you had something to say? What do you mean something to say? Well, you said he approached you. Do you know? Do you know how he knew to approach you? He was at my attorney's office. Um, did you waive attorney-client privilege so that uh, your attorney could talk to him about it? He wasn't in the meetings with my attorney, with me present or anything. So you walked out of your attorney's office and he was there? He was at my attorney's office, just not in conversations in regards to like why I was there. And you know this blogger and your uh, attorney have a very close business relationship? I do not. Do you know anything about this blogger? I do not. So why did you talk to him? He was with the media. You talked to all media that ever contacted you? No. And did you know this blogger has posted many I don't know. Oh, I, I, let me finish the question. Sorry. Did you know that this blogger has posted many articles indicating that he wants Kyle Rittenhouse to be found not guilty? I do not. Did you know this blogger has posted many articles attacking, uh, mostly falsely, my office, the district attorney's office? I do not know this. Did you do guy. any research about who this person was before you spoke to him? No. Actually, it's um, I, I don't think the, um, it's relevant. Uh, uh, that was my last question on that, on that topic. Perfect. So, uh, no, on that topic, I, no, I, I know it's on that topic. Thank you. So, would you describe our, our meeting in the DA's office as cordial and uneventful? It was, besides the uneasy feeling I had, it was pretty, pretty much like a normal meeting. So when we ask you if there's anything to add or beyond your statement, that made you feel uneasy. Yes. But when Attorney Richards asked you the next day, uh, and let, me, let me back it up. So we asked you, you felt uneasy, and you didn't say really anything in addition to your statement. Fair to say? Correct, because I didn't want to change it. So then when Attorney Richards asked you the next day if you have anything to add to your statement, you tell him all sorts of things. He didn't present it to adding my statement. He, he said, can I take notes? He didn't use the word statement like I'm changing my statement. So that, so that the verbiage is what made you uncomfortable? Correct. Did he have you read your statement before you talked to him? I just read it the night before. Okay, so, so the fact that you physically had your statement with us is what made you uneasy? Correct. Okay. Um, so now we're talking about your statement. Let's show you what is in Mark does. Uh, exhibit 134. Do you recognize this? Yes. What is that? That is the police statement I gave on 9-11-2020. And this is the one that we asked you to read in my office? Correct. And you make no mention at all of Mr. Rosenbaum having to be held back. Because this was taken on 9-11, I was a year prior to this when I walked into a building that I really didn't even want to be in, um, but the ATF, however you guys work on your cases, it was brought to you guys, not me voluntarily, the ATF brought it to you and got you guys involved. By you guys, you mean the detective that's the, investigating this case? Yes. I had a homicide detective over at my house. So you gave the statement on September 11th, 2020? Correct. Is it fair to say that your memory of the events was better on September 11th, 2020? Pretty much the same. You're not gonna forget this situation ever. Well, then why did you forget to put things in your report? I, first of all, it was, like I said, when I first walked into the police station, I walked through a police station that didn't even have a door, didn't have no glass attached. There was glass on the ground, completely all shattered on the ground. I have photos, don't worry. Um, shattered all over the ground. It was a very, you guys had me waiting constantly. Um, I had to wait to give my statement because they couldn't get a hold of D Detective Howard. So when he came in, it was a really, I, I don't want to say rushed, but it wasn't uh, take your time type of deal. You were there for, you gave, your statement was an hour and a half long. 
Don't know what. Right? I don't know how long it was. And they were in the room within five minutes of you walking in the I don't in the believe that. Room. So your explanation for why your statement leaves things out is because you walked through a door without a window? No. I was, very, I was trying to explain how nervous and anxious I was because, I mean, all around that area, just business, local businesses are being destroyed, everything. And to be walking into a police department in the middle of this time isn't good. I was threatened numerous times throughout the week of me photographing and capturing all, the, all these photos. I was threatened numerous times. So I was uneasy with people still standing outside the police department, walking in, knowing I have to walk out with these people out here. So you gave this statement 17 days after the shooting. Is that accurate? If, yeah. And you're still saying that property was being destroyed and there were protests there was seven no days later? Let me finish my question, please. 17 days later? There, not, nothing to the extent of this, the week of the shooting. Nothing to that extent, but there was no window in the police station. So, so the fact there was no window made it so you could not give an accurate statement? I'm not saying that. You I just said did. I, it, it, it's give, it gave he me anxiety. Yeah, so make sure you say, say what I'm did. saying. Did. Oh, okay. He, so, he did not say he didn't make an accurate statement. That was your words. You not said, you, words. Said, you said things were left out of your statement. Not on, intentionally. I mean, those are little details. That's a traumatic situation that someone has to go through. I, I just witnessed someone dying. It's another person getting their arm almost blown off. 17 days prior. Doesn't matter how long it is. I still suffer to that, from that traumatic still to this day. Do you have, uh, you said you've been nervous, you said you were anxious. Does that really affect your perception of events? It might, no. It's not gonna change. But I, like right now, I'm anxious. Like I have anxiety right now. Did you have anxiety when you spoke to us in our office? Absolutely. Now, you in your statement, there's no mention of Mr. Rosenbaum having to be held back. Correct. There's no mention of him saying anything about shoot me <sighs> N-words. Sorry, can you repeat that? Sure, sorry. There's nothing in there about saying, shoot me N-words. Correct. And is that because you saw it on a video later? When I was showing a video at Mr. Richard's office, as the video was playing, I was telling things that was happening before the video was actually playing. Like, I don't know, before the details that I said coming out my mouth happened on the video. So did you observe him say that, or did you see it on a video? I saw, I heard him say it, and like, like what are, what's your question? On August 25th, <laughs> as you were there that night, did you see Mr. Rosenbaum say that? Yes. Or is that based on video no. after? No, I saw him, oh, I heard him say that. But it's not in your statement? Correct. Uh, there's